Hi, this presentation is about standards-based learning and we'll explain some of the changes you'll see in the way we talk about learning this year. This isn't a new way of grading and assessing, but it is a shift in the way your learning is shared out to both you and your parents. Before we start, it's important to talk about some of the language we educators use. First, what is a standard anyway? Well, put simply, a standard expresses what a student should know and be able to do in a subject area and grade level. That's it. You'll sometimes also hear teachers talking about strands. Well, a strand is a group of similar standards. For example, in language arts, the standard supporting inferences with evidence and the other standard interpreting word meanings, these are both standards that are part of the same strand, reading literature. So they get combined together when we talk about them. Next up, assessments. When we use this word, we're talking about how teachers gather evidence of your learning, what you know and are able to do. This includes tests, quizzes, projects, reports, essays, labs, etc. And finally, we have reporting. This is how we communicate all the evidence of your learning back to you and your parents. Before we go to the reporting part, let's take a moment first to talk about how you'll be graded. There no longer exists an overall grade for an assignment. No more 85% for a science lab, for example. Now, all assessments, your projects and quizzes and tests, they're broken down into standards that you'll have been working on. This lets teachers and you zero in on your areas of strength and areas you may find challenging. This means that one project or test may include more than one grade in PowerSchool. You'll know what standard was being looked at and how you did on that particular standard. When assessing a standard, Teachers will give students feedback that tells them where they are in their learning. And this feedback will be described as levels of proficiency. And we have four of them. First, advanced. The student consistently demonstrates an in-depth understanding of standards and benchmarks, excelling at or exceeding grade level expectations. The student consistently applies and extends key concepts, processes, and skills. High levels of quality and complexity characterized performance. This is clearly going beyond what we would expect a student to have at a certain grade level at a certain point in time. Proficient is what we expect all students to be able to do. The student consistently demonstrates an understanding of the standards and benchmarks meeting grade level expectations. The student applies the key concepts, processes, and skills. Next, approaching proficiency. The student demonstrates some understanding of the standards and benchmarks. They meet some of the stated expectations and or learning goals. Performance though is inconsistent with regards to accuracy and quality. And lastly, limited proficiency. The student does not yet demonstrate sufficient understanding of the standards and benchmark. The student does not meet minimum grade level expectations at this point in time. Performance is inconsistent, even with support. Now, as the year moves forward, teachers will be gathering lots of evidence that show you where you are in your learning. A level of proficiency is not a simple calculated average. The teacher will look at your most consistent level of performance over time, placing more emphasis on the most recent evidence where appropriate. So if you've been working on the same standard over the course of the year, building your skills over time and then you finally get it, well the teacher should be able to report out that you've met the standard, or in some cases have even gone beyond. We can focus on your learning. Now our goal is to make sure that all students meet or go beyond subject standards. To do this, teachers will be gathering evidence all the time. Sometimes that evidence is used to help you move forward because it gives you feedback on what to do next. We call this formative assessment. It's an assessment for learning. It tells students and parents how you did working with the standards. 
but it doesn't factor in to your reported grade. Now, summative assessments, on the other hand, are meant to be shared with you and parents to show where you are in your learning at a given point in time. Summative assessments are what teachers look at when they need to report out evidence of your learning. Before a summative is given, however, students will have had formative assessments, meaning you should have had lots of feedback to learn from beforehand. A summative assessment and your performance on one should not be a surprise. Does everything count then? In short, yes, everything counts, but maybe not in the way that you think. Does this th mean then that students don't need to try when it comes to formative assessments like homework, that they only need to focus on their summative assessments? Well, here's the most important part of the presentation. We need feedback to grow and learn. If you don't put effort into the, your formative assessments, you'll never get the feedback you need to grow, and you won't do as well on your summative assessments. It is very, very, very important. Oh, and in case you haven't guessed, formative assessments include your homework. There's no opting out of homework either. If it isn't done, we need to figure out a way to help you to get it done. In some cases, Students may even be invited to meet with Mr. Lever and Mr. Gore after school for their responsibility and reflection sessions. However, it's our goal to never have students attend this, so always aim to get your work finished on time. Now, let's take a look at what standards look like when we open PowerSchool. Here's an example of a language arts class. Notice that we don't have any percentage scores. First, I'd like to draw your attention to an area called category score. This is where we're going to have our strands. Now, I said earlier that subject courses have been broken down into strands, which are really just groups of standards for that subject. Here you can see that in language arts, there are four strands listed. Whenever the teacher grades an assignment, that assignment is broken down into standards. These standards are then all combined and rolled up into the strands which give you an overall level of progress in that particular area. Below the strands we have our learning habits which communicate out how students participate in class, demonstrate responsibility, engagement, respect, and effort. This is what will be listed. Next we have the listing of assignments. Notice that there isn't an overall grade for the assignments. They're broken down by standards that are being measured. These are the standards that get rolled up into the strands. Notice as well the levels of proficiency listed for each standard. Advanced, proficient, approaching proficiency, and limited proficiency. The descriptors for each level can be seen by clicking on the score descriptor at the top. These levels are also listed for each strand. We also have a section for missing work. Anytime a student doesn't hand something in, it'll pop up here for both you and your parents to see. Well, this concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We'd be happy to talk with you further about this.